Welcome to the Music of Viva digital seminar for the group Sounds Baroque. Uh, this afternoon I have here with me, my name is John Hibbard, I'm the National Manager of Teaching and Learning, um, and I have here with me this afternoon the leader of Sounds Baroque, Jenny Erickson, hey. and uh, Narelle, yep. uh, who sings the soprano. soprano. Okay. So, <clears throat> Um, this afternoon we'll be taking you through the resource kit and the online learning that you will have access to and um, hopefully um, make lots and lots of very personal contact. The very first thing I will say is that Twitter is the way that you can be in touch with us this afternoon. If you don't have Twitter downloaded already, now is a good time to do that. Download Twitter, it's a very small application and you can put uh, Twitter onto your smartphone or your iPad. Um, and um, then you'll be able to communicate with us, ask us questions and make comments, um, maybe even have the odd pleasantry or even a joke. <laughs> so, okay, so Twitter is the way to go. Um, the hashtag is twitching, T-W-E-E-T-C-H-I-N-G, hashtag twitching, and that will help us all um, locate your tweets in the Twitter sphere out there. Um, as soon as you have your Twitter happening, please send us a tweet with your name, a cheerio, and the school that you're at, and we'll know you're there, and we can say hi to you as well. So to get those tweets happening. I have in front of me, or over there on my left, a screen where I can see your tweets coming up, so I'm looking forward to the first of those tweets coming through. Um, I'm going to, first of all, talk about the resources that you have access to. Just right at the start, you will all have received your USB stick, the little Music of Viva branded USB stick, and on that is everything that you need in terms of the digital interactive activities. And Sounds Baroque is a group in transition to being fully digitalized, and you actually have on this USB stick also PDFs of everything that is in the resource book. Now, the resource book is this brilliant red publication here, and in it are all the learning experiences that you um, can choose from, select from. Um, anything in there which is a score or a diagram, um, a chart will appear on the USB stick, and from there you can display it in your room, you can display it in your computer for uh, preparing your lessons. And you can even download and print if you want those um, bits of paper to share around the staff room or indeed for your students to look at if, if that's what you want for your learning experiences. Um, the, I'm looking at, well, yes, I'm seeing some very important information here. And this says that if you want to call in anything at all, questions or comments about this digital seminar, about the resources, or indeed about Sounds Baroque, um, 8394 6688. 8394 6688. And uh, I think Jason will answer, your phone, answer the phone rather than take your call during this digital seminar. Back to the resource. It's very important that you can navigate this resource. On the, once you've opened the resource up, on the left-hand screen, you'll um, see a view or resources uh, line in the menu there. Um, if you click on that and then click Teacher Preview, you'll get a screen where you can see the PDFs and the audio tracks and preview them as part of your lesson preparation. In the left-hand column, there are uh, documents also for overview and stuff to think about before, during, and after the concert. And there's also a brilliant section. I just happened to have printed mine off. I was able to hit print, and I have also a full resource list. Everything that's available to you, every audio track, PDF, and the digital interactive resources are available on that teacher preview screen. The other way you can use this brilliant little USB with the Music of Eva player on it is to click all resources and then click start. And as soon as that happens, you'll see a split screen. And on the top is all the printed resources and down the bottom is all the audio resources. And you'll be able to display a print resource and play the audio track that goes with it. And for your convenience, on the top of every print resource is the audio track 
that goes with that print resource. It will allow you on one screen to have the children hear the music and see what they need to see in terms of words or actions and things like that. So um, getting your, finding your way around this USB resource is fascinating and the one for Sounds for Off, this resource is particularly fabulous. <laughs> okay, so that's um, all about the resources. If you get into um, any trouble, if you have any uh, difficulties with those resources, please uh, call that number during the seminar or afterwards and um, you can get in touch with me or one of the uh, state staff and we will help you out with the navigation of the digital resources. Um, just one more thing, they can be copied and pasted onto other computers. Do not drag, do not drag the software because it can corrupt the the application, but you can copy and paste it onto the other computers where it may be used in your school. So a little bit there just about the resource because that really is a way of, um, if, you, if you have full access to the resource, then your children can be well and truly prepared and you'll be really happy preparing them for the concert with Sounds for All. Um, I'm just going to ask Jenny, can you tell us a little bit about Sounds Brock? I know it's on the uh, musicstaffroom.com, but just this afternoon, just to warm us up, a little bit about Sounds Brock for the teachers. Well, Sounds Brock's been going now about 25 years. So uh, Hercules, our latest show, it's only been going for three years, is really a summary of our work in the last 25 years. I think it's our best show ever. Uh, we've had um, I have costume designer, we've had um, a script writer, uh, we've had uh, composers write for us, so it's a very much a designed piece of work to go into your classroom for the age group. Um, even though it is an opera, it's, it's a fantastic um, opportunity to actually show uh, the students that they actually do like this music. We've gone into many schools where they're saying, we're not sure how this is going to work. But when we play and when we finish, they always say, well, this is one of the best music and yeah. shows ever. So we've had some great experiences. Um, can I talk a little bit about it? Well, I can I just chime in there and yeah. say the very first time I saw Sounds Baroque, we had some children from a very, very disadvantaged area and they lapped it up. They suspended disbelief with all mm. the theatre and drama and they, can, they participated in all the songs. I've seen your show with children who had never seen anything like it before, totally absorbed, and I've also seen it at the other end with children in a performing arts school. Mm -hmm. So it seems that wherever you go with this show, it's fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I mean, like, for, for us, one of the yeah. highlights last year was we went to a juvenile detention centre in the Riverina, and that, we're, we're talking with, uh, this was 14-year-old boys, um, basically, 14 to 18-year-old boys. We walked in there and they were all not facing us, they were just had their backs to us. By the end of the concert, they're all facing, except for one, all facing um, towards us and, and just really being part of it. Somebody played the viola da gamba. Um, they asked to to sing the rap again. And um, it was just really yeah, was an amazing experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we um, primarily want to do is give um, uh, children their first experience of opera and to make it a positive one. Um, so the show has been professionally directed, so it's paced. Through. They, they sit there for the whole, uh, a lot of teachers are, very, uh, are really amazed that, the, that their students have been able to sit through the whole show um, because we've designed it specifically so that when, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, there might be starting to lose concentration, something else will happen straight away and to, to click them right back in. So, mm. yeah, it's really well directed like that. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a show with um, plenty of points of engagement. Fabulous costumes. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful costumes. Wonderful characters. <laughs> Marvelous characters. And now who are the characters? We we have Jenny who's on the Viola da Gamba. Um, I also play Stratton. Uh, ah, very nice. Jenny Multitasking in the yeah, show. Everybody has a go. <laughs> so so can great. we tell the teachers the other people um, that you yeah, two here okay. this afternoon? So, I mean, obviously Hercules is the main character um, and it's the story of Hercules before he becomes um, brave. So the story is Hercules starts out um, as quite, um, uh, quite lost and quite... Um, he doesn't have any strength, he's shy, a very shy character, and then of course he becomes the brave Hercules. Um, along the way he meets um, characters that help him become brave. One of those is a crow, uh, which has a little cameo role. There's Apollo, the, the, um, the sun god, uh, and also um, his princess Hermione, who um, is a princess but also is turned into a bird, so she kind of has a couple of different hats 
mm -hmm. to play in that mm -hmm. in that sense. I think I. I oh, and yeah, so yeah. and then there's Lyco, the Eagle Lyco, mm -hmm. who also plays the harpsichord. Yeah. So um, that's part of the joy of the show is how musicians become characters, mm -hmm. and characters transform uh, when you put on the Apollo costume. Yes. The ludicrous lame. Mm -hmm. Yes, is, the ludicrous lame. It is fantastic. Yeah. 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 I mean, the other thing, good thing about our show also is that. If you're not um, a trained music teacher or music specialist, it doesn't really matter because you can take other aspects of, mm -hmm. from the, um, the show. You can work with the story or you can work with the dance. Um, we've brought some children. Yeah, we've had some great artworks done some as well. Artworks. We've had mm -hmm. people prepare these wonderful mm, books for us. Um, we love the artwork. That is wonderful. It's amazing, isn't it? It's wonderful. So you don't, you don't have to, if you feel, don't feel comfortable with all the music, there's other ways you can engage um, the students with, with our show. And languages as well, because it is based on a French opera, and there is a, a little bit of French in there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have some tweets coming in. I'm just wondering who's, I'm just not seeing who this tweet is from. Um, but it says, um, what exactly does Baroque mean and how is it pronounced? Well, I just said Baroque. Is that correct? Baroque is right. Yeah, Baroque. Mm -hmm. I mean, Americans say Baroque. Mm. If it's Baroque, you probably should and that's fix where, it. And that's, where the, yeah. Yeah, and that's where the confusion comes with the, mm. with the American um, pronunciation. But we say in, in, in the English tradition, um, Baroque. Mm -hmm. And we thank Yvonne in Sydney for that tweet. So now um, I... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some more tweets coming in. I hope if you haven't already, um, if you had not already downloaded Twitter, that you've been able to do that. And um, you just have to click on that little quill icon in the top right hand side of your Twitter screen, and you'll get a um, little screen to type in your up to 140 characters. A question, Narelle. There's Narelle. already another, there's also, she had another question there, what exactly does Baroque I, mean? Yes, indeed. Um, so Baroque was a period yeah. in time, a period, mm. um, it's uh, 1600 to 1750, uh, mm. um, a period of, um, of arts and music um, that um, in that time is called, um, you can have Baroque architecture, Baroque um, art um, and um, Baroque music as well. So um, art that was very ornamented. ornamented. Yeah. 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 And and in terms of Western civilization, it was a very important time for building science and art and great works of literature. Mm. It was a, quite a an art ideas of mm. terrific ideas about how society would work and how the world works. Um, astronomy, it was a fantastic time. So there are plenty of areas that uh, children can research and become aware of mm. uh, just by um, a, you're connecting with the Baroque. Yeah, another way of linking it all together. Mm, yeah, it wasn't just about the music, and of course, nearly everything that happened in music in music in the Baroque is still with us today. Is um, a foundation, even if you have a rock song, it's got elements of the Baroque. Well, in we it. we do say in the show Baroque on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah. that's pretty lame. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm looking up there to see if we have some tweets coming in. I'm not seeing any right now, but. Um, as we say now, is going to get your tweet on. This could oh, get really bad. Boy, it could get really bad. bad. Okay. <laughs> um, look, the grand celebration is a very important song in this show. Um, perhaps we could um, let the teachers know what the context for this, because it does, I think, come back more than once. So it's so like it comes in the beginning as an overture, and then uh, halfway through as a, a dance, and then at the end it's the final. Song. Yeah, it acts as a linking theme yeah. really through the whole through the mm -hmm. whole opera, which is quite yeah. um, uh, it's appropriate. Like a lot of operas will have recurring themes during during the mm -hmm. opera, and we we decided for this to be our theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Now, um, I think it's probably a good time. I think everyone's probably got their coffee and their cake, and um, if they're at home, they've put their children somewhere to play quietly on this damp afternoon. Um, maybe you're at school with your um, colleagues in the staff room and everyone's wandered in from recovering from that last part of their lesson. They've had that cup of tea, they've done that bit of registration, whatever it is that you had to do. Hopefully everyone's there. Can we um, just use the call and response or the echo technique perhaps, the echo technique to learn the first couple of lines sure. of the song, Narelle, could you lead us now? Yeah. E echo is, I said call and response because that's actually how the phrase structure works, but we're going to use the echo technique. And the way I like to do this is just to say to the children, echo, and that becomes an instruction with a whole range of um, very firm meanings. We don't have to use any more words than that. Echo, if you can use that technique and we'll learn. 
Would you play your viola de gamba, viola de gamba, please, Jenny? Thank you. Here we go. Sometimes so, sing we, a phrase and then sing it back. Yeah. So we're so at the other side of the uh, digital seminar. Please feel free to uh, join in um, and see how we go. Okay. Please. Hand in hand together. Hand in hand together. Happy as a lark flying merrily through the shining skies. Happy as a lark flying merrily through the shining skies. We'll share our lives forever. We'll share our lives forever. Ready to face any dangers that arise. Ready to face any dangers that arise. It's a great way to learn the song using the echo technique, and of course, you can use the audio tracks in the MV player, the Music of Eva player. They're all there for you um, to uh, learn this song. And there's also the Build a Song uh, interactive resource where the children get to mix and match all the bits of the song, and in the process, get to know it really well. So, so learning to know that they're learning to sing the song is very, very important. Now, a feature of this um, song, and this is in musicstartroom.com, explained extremely well by Sue Lane. But this afternoon, we'll do it as a workshop activity. Um, it has uneven length phrases. Of course, in the Baroque, they didn't mind about uneven length phrases. In the classical times later, everything had to be balanced and add up and That'd be nice and neat, but in the Baroque, it was just however you felt like it a bit, and a bit of a lot of fun. So we have, I think, um, can we just sing and we'll see how many counts there are. Now we can do this with the children, how many counts. If you can sing yeah. the first phrase, please, and I'll just put a finger up for each count here. Okay. And heart and heart together. Ah, so we have four beats in that phrase. And let's sing the next phrase, please, in the realm. Happy as a lark flying merrily through the shining sky. Okay, so we have that. Now, I like sort of holding up fingers and doing things like this in class because it makes the activity visible. It makes the thinking visible. So there we have it. Now, if we can do the next phrase, the question and the answer together, and we'll hold up four fingers and then six fingers. We'll see how it goes anyway. So, so continuing on? Yeah, if we can continue on, on share our lives yep, forever, yep, yep. and I'll... Yep. Count each phrase as it occurs. Okay. Here we go. And we'll share our lives forever, ready to face any dangers that arise. And the six count happens on a sustained note. So, just working with the idea of four and six. Um, in the musicstartroom.com, Sue and our state coordinator Anna do an absolutely brilliant demonstration of the Baroque dance called a gavotte and I urge you to watch that it's really great to follow um, and then teach that to the children because in doing the gavotte they also become aware of the unequal length phrases so yeah. so here's three ways we can sing the song we can count the beats we can do the gavotte and the very last thing is that music is about a flow so we can count the beats and you notice as I'm counting I'm actually doing a flow. I'm not clapping so much, although you could. Um, I might just try. This is um, how a flowing musical clap, I hope. Let's go. And... Okay, so, so just when you're clapping, rather than making a loud sound that disrupts it, just a bit of flow. I think always, yeah. whatever activity you're doing, make it fit the style. And here, I have like it's a bit of a Baroque good long clap. Um, then the phrase, if we could, now we can arch the phrase over and just use our hand to flow through the air from the beginning of the phrase to the end. So we don't have to say what a phrase is, we just have to say this is a phrase and use our hands and I think the concept's well established. Can we sing please? We'll just do the phrases. Uh, from... Uh, okay. This is from Hand in Hand Together. Okay. Now, uh, teachers at the other side uh, in your workspace, uh, in the digital seminar, if you could join with us please. Marking out the phrases for Sounds Baroque, um, the grand celebration. Here we go. The feeling for phrase is just that it becomes a feel and becomes a flow. So 
excellent things to do. So lots of stuff we can do with um, the grand celebration and they may be part of a very big music lesson or you may just do this activity in a transition in your classroom so you don't have to do the whole lesson all at once. Okay, that's the grand celebration. Now, Jenny, we've been listening to you play the viola da gamba and I know in the interactive resources there is some brilliant filming of you doing a short demonstration and then a longer demonstration. But for this afternoon, can you speak to the teachers about the viola da gamba? Okay, so the viola da gamba is, um, as you can see, like a cello, but we have seven strings instead of uh, four. Actually, in the resource books, the gamba only has six strings, but mine has seven. Um, they added a seventh string later on in the Baroque period. Um, it's got frets like a guitar, as you can see. A cello, a cello doesn't have frets, so I can actually play like a guitar. But mostly, of course, I use my bow. Um, the string players out there, you might notice I don't hold the bow like this. I actually hold it under underarm. And if I want to play louder, I actually push the hair down. If I want to play softer, I release it. So this, just so you have a little bit of the sound of the game. Right? <laughs> Now you might have noticed also, you probably can't see, but it actually doesn't have a spike. So I actually have to hold it with my legs. Hence the name Viola da Gamba, Gamba in English, meaning leg. So Gamba of course is Italian. Now like the violin family, excuse me, everybody's here. Families. It comes in family members. <laughs> Uh, they come in all different sizes. So this is the smallest member of the family. Unlike the violin, however, you don't hold it under your chin. It's too thick to do so. It doesn't matter how small or large, they're, they're always hold, held by your legs. So just to give you a little demonstration. Um, and I actually, if there's any string players in the audience, or I'll, I ask a, a child or a student to come up and have a go. So I would think that was a violin when I first saw it, until you see the frets and yeah. the amount of strings mm -hmm. it has. That's right. And also you notice we have um, C holes instead of F holes. There's no real reason for that. It's just what, what happened back in that time. So it's, there's a few differences. Mm. Yeah. So in the interactive resources, there are two places you can go for the sounds of Sounds Baroque. You can go to the very first uh, of the interactive resources, uh, which has, um, you can make a game, you can make any game you like. I, I've worked with year twos and we've had charades, you know, what do you look like when you're singing like a soprano or <laughs> when you're singing like a baritone? Uh, what do you look like when you're playing the pas or, or yeah. when you're playing the viola de gamba? So, um, but they can uh, play around with the screen. They can you know, tap on tiles out on your interactive whiteboard or if you have a computer, if you're using a computer, they can tap on the tiles or click on them and hear samples of the sounds. Uh, they can then put things into families and they can experiment and it tells you if you're right or wrong and it's a cute little game and you can make up a, your own game um, to do uh, with those, um, those um, activities. And the very last thing on that Sounds of Sounds for Rock activity or the digital resource is a short demonstration so they can see um, Jenny playing, they can see Narelle singing, they can see Dave singing, and it's actually captioned. The new resources are all captioned so that the literacy associated with the, the playing and the music is there as well. Wow. Now, once you've done that, there are four fantastic videos where Narelle explains at length about being a soprano. Yes. And it's right. all captioned and chapterized. Dave explains about being a baritone. And is he the funny guy? He's, he is a funny guy. You're going to have one funny guy. Yeah, Dave, Dave's the funny guy <laughs> yeah, at the show. No, he's funny. Yeah, um, he's very funny. <laughs> anyway, so Dave does a really great talk about being a baritone. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, you do wonderful talks about the um, yeah. Viola yeah. Gamba mm -hmm. and the uh, Pas de Zoo, I think. Yeah. And then um, Ray. Ray on the harpsichord. That's, that's, that's a lot, another wonderful moment in the um, in our show is when we ask a student to come up and play the harpsichord. Um, so if you've got a child in your school who plays piano, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity for them to come up and play on the harpsichord. It might be good for you to have someone in mind that you'd like to yeah. actually get up and, and have a play mm -hmm. and you can let us know beforehand. 
Mm. It's actually changed people's lives. We had a harpsichordist who heard us in kindergarten and ended up, ended up playing yeah, in he, sounds he rock. Sounds <laughs> rock. Mm. That's the first time they heard harpsichord. So, so a, a fabulous introduction for the children is the sounds of sounds baroque. Mm. Just seeing it on the on the screen. If you have an interactive whiteboard, or you can display them equally well on a um, digital projector, a data projector. Or if you want, you can put them on the computers in the classroom and set activities, but they can become very familiar with those things. And then it's real when they come to the concert, they can actually get involved. And I think it's a great thing about your show is that interaction with the, the students. Now, yeah. we have a tweet there. I think we do. We've got, uh -huh. what are the other differences between the classical period and the Baroque period? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I suppose um, the main thing that comes to mind is um, embellishments and decorations. Um, yeah. There's a lot it? more probably ornamentation in the Baroque than there is in the classical mm -hmm. period. And also the instruments started changing, so the harpsichord started uh, going into disrepair and the, the forte piano came into existence. Um, unfortunately, viola da gamba left for a long time after about 1730. There wasn't much playing of the old game. The whole violin, violin family took over, so the instruments were changing, um, and uh, the form, or well, the form of the of music was changing slightly as well. But yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. when you think of classical music in mean, the classical period, it's, it's really you, you know you Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven, and um, and the um, orchestra expanded. Um, Beethoven you know, he expanded the orchestras. The, 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 instrument. the instrumentation became yeah, yeah. As I said a lot yeah. a lot larger. In the orchestra as well, so yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, what was on my mind? I was thinking ahead to the next piece. Um, <laughs> it was it was that the last question? I think we probably answered that. I know what it was. In the demonstrations on the interactive whiteboard activities, those digital activities, you explain e each member of the ensemble explains about ornamentation, mm. and yeah. so that very particular baroque thing about adding frilly bits yeah, to decorating the melody, melody. decorating it. Mm. Is explained. And yeah, yeah, there's another one there. Does um, Hercules have a Baroque dance too from Sandy and the Hunter? Hello, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hercules learns a dance um, as part of his quest to become brave. So um, uh, myself, as the character Apollo, teaches uh, Hercules how to dance a gavotte. So um, we do teach a dance in the show and get um, some of your students to help out with that as well. We, we pull some um, some students out of the audience and they get to dance the gavotte um, on stage. But if you have a dance oh. group, um, oh, yeah. if you have a dance group and they'd like to prepare it, um, we, we, we love performances. Mm. <laughs> We've had some lovely dance groups yeah. prepare their own versions of gavottes. Yeah. And, um, it's always lovely and, to see And that. this is a good time to mention that. It's fantastic. It's wonderful if you do prepare something. What is very important is that Jenny and Narelle and the rest of the group know ahead of time that you've done that. Yes. Um, and you can ask, I think, go through, um, uh, through Anna or Jason, uh, your state team, to mm. contact Jenny and make sure that they know that you're going to do this performance because it kind of kind of helps. I was at one of your performances and saw the gavotte and it was extraordinary. Mm. And what a show. So yeah, mm. highly recommended. Mm. Um, in the show, it doesn't come up in this order, but in this digital seminar, it's a good idea. I, just to um, change the pace is the dungeon rap. Oh, wow. And I think it goes a little bit like this. Let's, um, I might just play a bit of dungeon rap here. Oh, hang on. This one here, I think. Yeah, this was um, it's written especially for us. We got this And so it goes. Um, <laughs> I was knocked out the first time I heard a harpsichord <laughs> playing rap. I thought that was pretty good going. Yeah. yeah. And to, to have the hand drum doing the um, the beats as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now you're saying it was specially composed, the Dungeon Rap. Yes. Yeah. By Dan Walker, an That's Australian right. composer. Um, it's worked a lot with uh, with students and children. So yeah, it, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job on that one. <laughs> great. Yeah, the, the the children absolutely love this, mm. um, and um, we often are asked to sing it again, do it again at the end of the show. Can we hear that again? Um, and it's probably 
one piece that um, a lot of um, non-music teachers feel that they can grasp because of, of the rap element to it. So it's it's more of a kind of just a lyrical a lyrical um, mm -hmm. thing rather than um, a, you know um, a mel melodic. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a good one. Yeah, and in the uh, it, musicstaffroom.com again with Sue Lane a fantastic um, description of how this rap works mm -hmm. and in your introduction you talk about why it belongs in a rock, in a rock why it belongs in a baroque, baroque opera maybe we could just go through that now how how are the two are connected well the, the red is like a, a instead of a song it's more like a speech rather than the song mm -hmm. and so that's how it corresponds yeah. to the function. Um, so in the, in, the, in the form of opera you have recitative and you also have aria. So recitative is uh, like a, so, a spoken sung um, passage, passage, passage that um, take, carries the story along and then when the emotion needs to be let out that's when you go into an aria and a recitative is normally one syllable per note and in that sense, it's very much like rap because rap is pretty much one syllable per note too and it has that spoken sung element. So we thought that there really are a lot of comparisons between rap and recitative. And so we thought what a great way to bring it together um, to bring it, uh, everything that goes around comes around and that's how, that's how we feel about yeah. the rap and recitative. And it, it is a wonderful point of engagement and change of pace in the show. Mm -hmm. um, rap's kind of, Good. Can we? I think we should have a little rap lesson. I think we should have a rap. Okay. Lesson. Now this is this afternoon on the Music of Eva digital seminar. And by the way, as I'm doing this little rev up for rap, I'm really waiting for some more tweets to come in. The last one we had was from Sandy in the Hunter. So your hashtag twitching is your way of asking questions, making a comment to us. You know, you might like the colour of my shirt, or <laughs> maybe you know, in a real smile. <laughs> Maybe the spots on Jenny's dress. Anyway, no, if you um, just to let us know you're there, um, what you're thinking, and um, maybe uh, even the cake you're eating at this moment. I would like some cake. Yeah, well, I don't know if I want to know that because it's going to make me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hashtag twitching um, from you, please, teachers. Uh, rap is a great thing to do with children. You do need a microphone in the end, and any microphone will do, really. Um, and if you have a, a hi-fi system or a PA for sport, it really doesn't matter. Plug in a microphone. Uh, the important thing is that um, there's some basic techniques. So if you know more rap or you're going to do bigger rap than what I'm doing this afternoon, that's cool. But I think I'll just provide an entry point this afternoon. So to do a rap, I just like for uh, primary school especially, just what I call boots and cats. So if we all, just after me, and we'll, can we do it? And if yeah. you can do it, please, teachers and my, my dear colleagues out there. Okay, we say boots. Boots. We just say that normally. Cats. Cats. Boots and 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 cats. Boots and, and of course, while we're at it, we're starting to get a bit rhythmic. And of course, one way to get rhythm going is just to put a bit into the body, a bit of shoulder action, or maybe mm -hmm. the movement of the feet. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Now, after a while, you can start to put more force into the lips. Boots, cats. Boots, cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats and boots and cats. Boots and cats and boots and cats. Then keep going until you start to drop out the vowel sounds. You know what this? Boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats. And there is the start of your rap. And of course, if you get a microphone nice and close, the explosions coming off the lips and that coming from the tongue starts to create those fabulous rap sounds. So it's just boots and cats. So I'm just going to put my <laughs> folder down here. I like it. The, the rap has a nice sort of rhythm. I'm just going to do this here. You can do this. Join in with us. And it's just two patches and a clap like this. And after me, please. And we can actually say it with the words for like. Boots and cats, boots and cats, boots and cats, and make it more percussive. Boots and cats, boots and cats, and leave out the vowels. Boots and cats, boots and cats, boots and cats, and one more. Hey, and then we're starting to rap, and of course we're getting that rhythm into it. Um, 
in class, you could set up part of the class doing the words, part of the class doing the patch. Not everyone has to do everything, they're multitask. And then the rap goes over the top. Now, mm. Narelle, yes. I've heard that you're pretty good at the rap that I happens can in handle Hercules. This. I can handle the rap. I, I don't do the rap in the show. It's done by um, by Hercules himself, but mm. um, I think I can, I can manage. To okay, so in our digital seminar, here's an opportunity to practice a little bit of rap from the show. Uh, this is a smash hit moment in the show. Not well, yeah, we it are is. probably a smash hit. It is a it's smash a, hit, it is a smash hit in the show. So, um, if you could take us through, um, I might do it with a patching first. Mm -hmm. And can you do the wrap? Now, okay. maybe we slow it down like we would in class. Now, you can still do this as an echo, but just pause. In your digital resources, if you go um, play or as view all resources, click start, you'll be able to open up the PDF inside the split screen that displays the words to the wrap with the accented words highlighted just the same as they are in the book. And down the bottom is the player. You'll be able to select, I think it's track 17, and you can play the wrap while the children say it. And it's just a great way, having that resource there, a great way to learn it. Anyway, okay. we're not doing that this afternoon because we have Narelle. Mm. Okay, Narelle, can you take us through the wrap, please? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can we count Do you four? Want to set it up? One, yeah. two, one, two, two, and. Yeah, here we go. There's this evil dude like a man who's stolen my girl. Dear her money, furnace, princess in the whole wide world. Well, me not like her when his henchman gone and knocked her away in some dingy dungeon far from the light of the day. I say, oh, 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 they got my princess. Oh, oh, oh. And now my princess with that spider's back to six like a beast. His hits his big nasty ruptures and those rocks in their teeth. She's all alone in the dungeon in the hole in the ground. So I'm strapping on my sword and baby, I'm coming down. Hold on, princess. Down the big old stairs. Come on, princess. Gonna get you out of there. Hold on, princess. I know you're all alone. Come on, princess. Girl, I'm taking you home. Come on, princess. Down the big old stairs. Come on, princess. I'm gonna get you out of there. Come on, princess. I know you're all alone. Come on, princess. Yeah, I'm taking you home. Come on, princess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We could have stopped a lot earlier, I but know, I was really I'm enjoying that. <laughs> it was happy fun. Um, <laughs> and now, look, all those audio tracks are in your digital resources. And once the children get this, this is again a wonderful transition activity. In a week, you might uh, they might do this six or eight times. Just a little something that happens between lessons, or maybe you're moving from a lesson which is seated off into a wet area to do art or, or some some other activity, and maybe the wrap is how you get from A to B. So <laughs> I, I do encourage you to incorporate these really great little ideas into your general lesson format so they become part of the fabric of the school. They don't necessarily have to be confined to the music lesson. Okay. We'll so also actually have other people, kids design their own raps. Uh -huh. Ah, yes. And actually that might work in well with the could you do the, the wrapping around from Sarah in The Hunter. Mm. I think he does actually. It's Try. all that sort of that semi quaver. Uh, well, probably because it's, it's not based on on like a pitch or counterpoint. Therefore, it, it'd just be like a rhythmic pattern. You could exercise. You could try. I, it. Yeah, do, you, do you know what? It doesn't matter if things don't work. Mm. It's something that you could try with your colleagues. I'm not going to try it here because I think I get in such a tangle I may never escape. Um, but you can try with your colleagues and see if it does work as around, or even ask children to work, work as around and mm. explore. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. I would like to see some Twitter about that. Tweet. You, by the way, twitching doesn't have to happen just during this digital seminar. You can twitch anytime. I go onto my Twitter and I check up twitching and I find stuff happening there. So, um, yeah, you, you're welcome to use Twitter anytime. Mm -hmm. Ask a question. Make it and make, but making up um, yeah. your own rap is fantastic. And again, we've had presentations of um, some students that have put together their own rap, and they're always fantastic. Mm -hmm. Actually, always better than ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they are. And, and not in association with your group, but I've actually seen uh, children come up with nursery rhymes in rap form. Nice. Um, so yeah, there's lots of great stuff you can do with rap. So, so we've, sorry? Yeah. yeah no, we, so we've broached rap, we've got a little bit of beatbox 
boxing technique happening. And those, uh, by the way, those big boxing ideas that I've given you, there are a whole lot more. Go online. There are any number of people online who are really keen to teach you about boot, beat boxing. It's just the beat, boots and cats is a great way to get kids started. That's all. And never worry, as I said earlier, never worry about whether you've got the fancy gear. Just any old PA, raid the sports department's PA or the deputy principal's PA and do beatboxing. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Ah, the rack. Because this is in the dungeon, isn't it? This is associated with being in the dungeon. This is when Hercules um, becomes um, brave, yeah? Yeah, so he's um, turned into um, brave Hercules. Um, and we have made him look brave, so his whole persona changes, and that's when he um, does the cool rap, the brave rap, and he's talking about going. He's now brave enough to go and save Hermione, his princess, who is, who is in the dungeon. Yes, thank you. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And I was leaning over there because I was operating my digital interactive resource, and I can see that there is a black magic storm soundscape there and it doesn't involve a lot of musical sounds but um, it has all the sounds of a storm the creaking and the different types of wind and all the, the sounds of a, a castle and a dungeon so and I think the is it the black magic from the is, the, is it the evil who's the evil Lyco like, like like brings on a bit of that That's awful right. magic here yeah. and Jen has got um, a special uh, what is it the it's, I, don't, I actually don't know what it's called but it's a thunder machine so, yeah, we have oh, the thunder drum. <laughs> the thunder drum. The thunder drum. I thunder like thunder drums. Yeah, you can make them yourself, apparently. So yeah, it's you not can. I, I buy them and they break. Oh, right. But then I was teaching in high school where things got broken. Um, they were a bit, well, the boys were a bit robust with right. them. They weren't being um, vandals, but just very robust. They love their thunder drums. Um, there are two soundscapes. There's one soundscape that uses a lot of the musical ideas from uh, Dan Walker's rap, and the other one uses sort of um, like. Um, movie sounds, um, foley sounds, if you like. So soundscaping, depending on your children, find the one which is um, which suits the needs of your children best. Mm -hmm. Create the soundscapes. You can hear the samples. You can click them, and they bounce up on the screen. And you can move them around and make them shorter or longer. And you can make them softer or louder. And you can layer them up and create textures. And then with your soundscaping, expand that into literacy. Um, you can maybe create poems or stories and perhaps have a drama um, and use the soundscape as a backing track, if you like. Um, I love to create a movement activity. So each sound has a movement that goes with it. And then uh, the class, play, they create the soundscape and then they play the soundscape. Um, against their movements and have this textured sort of movement piece. So with the soundscaping, there's so much you can do. Uh, I had a year two class that I was doing some work with soundscaping. After an hour, they didn't want to stop. They were going to keep going creating soundscapes. So um, I urge you to have a lot of fun and, and look at the cross-curriculum possibilities with soundscaping, uh, especially with this dungeon piece. Yeah. Um, and I think in our book here, I'm looking at activity three, story time, you know. Um, mm. Well, yep. at the beginning yep. of the CD, actually, oh, that's um, point, yeah. there is, um, mm. it's not a soundscape that we've done, but it's almost like a Peter and the Wolf, mm. I think. Yeah, Jenny. so it's a summary of the story and there's musical excerpts. Exit, so, um, you know, it's one of the, we just thought at the end of the day, maybe it's something you could put on the CD so that they, we could hold view of the story and the opera. Yeah. Um, within a, I think it goes for about five minutes. Yeah, it's just a narration synopsis, yeah, but really um, with inserts of, um, with some soundscapes in there and in, in inserted some of the music so that you do get an overall view of, of the story. Yeah. It's really helpful. Yeah. I just want to mention the digital resources too. With all those PDFs are there for you to use. The things that are in the book are here, um, the pictures or the scores in the book are there as PDFs for you to display on your interactive whiteboard or data projector. They can be printed off. Um, there are enough resources for you, if you feel confident, if you wish to, to actually create your own lessons around these things. So the lessons that appear in this resource book are ideas and suggestions, and they're a great way to start, but feel free to expand on this. And just as uh, Jenny held up earlier a work sample from uh, a school, uh, if you have any great work, we love to see it. We um, you know, get sent uh, pictures um, through the, um, the internet. Uh, sometimes people uh, turn up to shows with stuff. So um, if you have some great work that you'd like us to see, bring it along, bring it to the show, 
or um, send along to Music of Eva. Okay, um, that's the wrap. So if, um, they could come to the performance and do one of the wraps. That was the thing, wasn't it? Yeah. They could sort of yeah. join in at some point. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, now, really fascinating was the sonnery round. Nice. That beautiful sonnery round. Um, I'll just uh, pick it up here on my my. So I'm playing here the MV player, um, and it sounds a bit like this. Oh, I didn't mean to cut off. I meant to fade out. I meant to fade out beautifully. Okay. Um, the summary round has this beautiful, um, this repeating idea. It's, it's, it gets called a ground bass, which I suppose you could call it. I yeah. prefer to call it an ostinato. Yeah. This um, is probably a very short one because there's only three notes. So. Yeah. yeah. So can you place yep. the ground bass, please? Wow. And Sue on uh, musicstarcrim.com demonstrates how that can be put onto a, a xylophone or some, a mallet percussion instrument. Um, so yeah, it's just something, it's accessible to students of virtually every age, I That's think, right. and ability. So a nice foundation. And then, there's a song that's at the top in the round. There is, there's yeah. um, a round. Shall we, it's shall a round, we do it's it? on page 39 of our book. On page 39, finding page 39. Now, these pages also are reproduced, so you can, in the, um, in the digital results, so you can yeah. find them there, uh, download and print, but we have them in our book. We do. In front of us. Okay, can you do a, a, um, uh, a round of the round? Well, if you could do for us, just so that we can be singing. Uh, can you do a echo oh, yeah. technique, uh, just phrase by phrase, please, sure. and ask you uh, our uh, teachers in the part of the digital seminar uh, join in it with the echo. Here we go. Round and round and all around. Round and round and all around. And keep an even steady tread. And keep an even steady tread. Look left, look right, look straight at the night. Look left, look right, look straight at the night. There's nothing there to dread. There's nothing there. Now, I think the actions that go with this song That's, yes. really help everyone remember. And again, every time I've seen this show, the every child gets stuck into these beautiful yeah. actions. So can you teach them to us, please? I can. We'll do the same we, thing. We'll sing and do the actions, I think, at the same time. Okay. Then please join in. Mm -hmm. Go. Round and round and all around And keep a beam and steady tread Look left, look right, look straight at the night There's nothing there to dread I nearly got caught out there because we were using a mirroring technique. Yes, that's right. Um, so uh -huh. in your teaching, if, if you can, if you don't use it already, mirroring is great because the students will move and you move in the same apparent direction. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Just go through the actions. There's yeah. round and round. Yep. Round, round and round, and all, all around. around. Then and keep, keep an, an even, even steady tread. tread. Yeah. Then look left. Left. Look, look right. right. Look, Look straight, straight at, at the night. night. There's, There's nothing there to dread. Can we sing once more? I'm rather enjoying this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> round and round and all around. And keep an even steady tread. Look left, look right, look straight at the night. There's nothing there to dread. Now, Sarah.
tweeted in the question about whether the ramp would work as a round, but this one was composed as a round. Yes. Okay, so um, if you're at home, divide yourself in half. <laughs> uh, no, uh, if you have more than one of you, why don't we try the round? So if we can, if you're um, wherever you are uh, listening and participating in the digital seminar and getting your tweet on, um, decide who's going to start. If Nouriel, can you be the person who starts I the can round? I start the round, yes. And when would you like me to start? After, I'll do round and round and all around. Um, okay, so we're going to start when the round comes up again. It all around. Here we go. Okay, so this is um, sonary round as a round. Yes. <laughs> round and round and all around and keep and keep on Beautiful. High five. Very nice. Okay. Um, it's just an activity I know that children love, the students love to do because it's very accessible. Uh, Sue in musicstartroom.com uh, stresses the importance of knowing where the first beat of the bar is. If the students are feeling that beat with either, if you can sing it moving around the room as a unison with a football, round and round and all around, or if you're sitting at the desk maybe gently patting, Round and round and all around. And of course there are some really great activities that Sue goes through filling in the other beats. Round and round and all around. So the feeling, the pulse of three and the three beats in the bar, establishing that will help them sing the round in time as well. Mm. And of course, um, again, the students are able to yeah, get that going. Yep. Fantastic, and and the the melody lends itself to recorder as well. Oh yes, and being a sustained thing to match the voices. Yes. Yeah, it's really good bones to build lots of things with, with this. this yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's good music. Good um, yeah. it's Dorian mode. Dorian mode. So it's in a Dorian, so it's just from D to D. Yeah. So you can just do some beautiful question and answer things. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't matter what note they're playing; yeah. it's always going to sound pretty neat. Yeah. And I love this song because once they've sung it and done the pulse, I've seen even year three children go to the xylophone yeah. and work out the melody without being shown. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yes. so a great one to actually either follow the activities in the red book. Yeah. Actually, can we say if yep. you do nothing else with our show, this is the song um, that's really the thing that they'll become involved in it um, because we do it a few times during the show as well. So mm -hmm. it's um, it, it really is great if they notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, their most, their, the most of the interaction that they'll have is through this song yeah. piece, yeah. So mm -hmm. then this one is great. It will be the best thing to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Dorian Mode, we're getting a, a tweet here. <laughs> um, Dorian Mode, apart from being the name of a certain jazz artist, um, um, <laughs> The Dorian mode, uh, we think here of what we used to call the ecclesiastic modes, which are sort of based loosely on the old Greek idea of the scales. They all had a particular emotion, a particular feel. So the Dorian mode, very simply, is just all of the white notes on the piano from D to D. Or if you're using melodic percussion, mallet percussion, uh, just D to D with no sharps or flats. Um, D is the home note, and it just works beautifully uh, for improvisation or composition, D to D, and of course it fits beautifully under the fingers of a recorder as well. Um, so yeah. if you go down to low C, you just go down to D. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd add about the Dorian mode? No, but it just gives a lot of freedom, I think, when you're not worrying about the sharps and flats, for mm. the students be able to work mm. And I, I, I feel tempted, but I won't. You can actually um, do nice rhythmic things with the Dorian mode too if you want to start to add a little bit of rhythm and a bit of fun with it because the, it, the student, students can improvise something more quickly and will always sound good for them so if they've got a nice rhythmic vocabulary they can uh, have fun with Dorian mode aside from the sonnery prelude. Yeah. yeah and sonnery of course that's um, 
It's the bells, I think. The bells, the bells yes, that's yes. right. It's yeah. actually built on a, um, there's yeah. a very famous uh, viol de gamba composer called Maren Mare, and um, he wrote a piece called The Sonnery, so that's what's based on the sonnery, mm -hmm. which is actually depicting the bells of um, one of the churches that he lived mm -hmm. close to. So, yeah. Yes, now uh, we have a, a tweet here about the actions. Uh, now, the actions are in the Red Book, in the, digital in the uh, printed resources. Um, they're also demonstrated by Sounds Baroque in mm -hmm. the show video, which you can access on musicstaffroom.com. So by watching musicstaffroom.com, you'll see a full performance of each of the songs in the show uh, with student interactions, because when we film Sounds Baroque, it actually re runs around student interaction. So we made sure we had a bunch of wonderful school students there. So you can get an idea of how your students might um, do the action song. Yeah, and that, feel, feel free to do your own actions as well. And we've been to some schools where the, they've made up their own actions and we will go with that as well mm. if you prefer to do your own. Mm. Wonderful. And of course, um, so you would like to bring your school music and your own performances or ideas to the show. Um, who knows when these things are going to happen in your classroom? You might have been um, working on a, an activity and one day, blam, you think, oh, these students might say, we'd love to do this for Sounds Baroque. Or you might think, this would be great to put in the show when Sounds Baroque comes to our school. That's the point at which you should um, email or call our state team and say, we have something that we think would be great in the show. Jenny, is there a too late time, the day before, the five minutes before? When is it too late for people to uh, I mean, I, as long as we know before the show. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, as long as we know. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, I know things, it's, Schools are busy, and um, as long as somebody asks, tells us before the show, that's mm. fine. Yeah. So well, then we just have to fit it in somehow. Mm. Yeah, and especially if we're doing um, multiple shows at your school, then um, we can plan um, to adjust um, our, for, show, uh, yeah. our, our day a little bit yeah. around it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, good. Now, do we have any um, any questions from um, from our teachers out there? Any Twitter tweet questions? I I know that our state team would um, like to reinforce that that pre visit sheet that goes out is filled in. Now, uh, Jenny and Narell, um teachers fill in the pre visit sheet, but really, can you add a little bit of meaning around that? How important is it that it has certain information? And is there something about your group that the pre visit sheet needs to tell you? Uh, well, first of all, the first thing is um, the entry to your school. So um, and maybe um, if your school doesn't have a number, because now we use um, our GPSs, uh, if your school doesn't have a number, if you put the nearest cross street, um, um, yeah. nearest cross street um, to your school, awesome. that would be fantastic. So, and also uh, the gate entry, because we have got so much gear, we've got a set costumes and a, and a hubs court. We just need to have a, to know exactly where we can get the car in as close as possible to, to the venue. Yeah, we've got two cars to get yeah, in. Yeah, two now. cars we, to get in. Yeah. Uh, and so that's three. important. And on top of that, um, we we, try, we aim to get there 40 minutes beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, so the harps court us needs half an hour mm -hmm. to chew. Well, to of silence. Of silence. silence. Or at least around 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes actually. So to, 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 to chew harps court. So yeah. we can't just come into your, uh, if you've got a band practice beforehand, um, and then we start, it's not going to happen. We just need 20 minutes of silence mm -hmm. to chew. That's right. Okay. And I, I've heard from, um, so I've heard as well that sometimes. Uh, the show time is put down as nine o'clock, for example, oh, when the yes. bell goes. Yes. But I think, is it right? The show time needs to be actually when the show can start, yeah, not when right. the bell goes. Yeah, because sometimes uh, we might have a show for ten o'clock, and uh, and but we were finding um, sometimes that uh, people would start arriving at ten o'clock, so our show wouldn't then start till about ten past mm -hmm. ten. So the the time that we would like the time mm -hmm. that the actual show. Is going to start. Yeah. So it sounds to me a bit like a dinner engagement <laughs> that uh, we say to people, um, uh, we'd like you there at 6.30 for dinner at 7. Yeah. It sounds to me like we're having a Baroque performance. Yeah. We'd like the children in the hall by a certain time yes. for a show which is going to start yeah. at a certain yeah. time. So if our, if our show is yeah. going to start at 10 o'clock, then we'd like um, the, the students and, and um, uh, who are coming, coming, to coming to to, at 10 to or 5 to at the latest, yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. Uh, now um, that um, 
I was just a little distracted by that one there because we just had a couple of other things to talk about with Sonnery Run. Yeah. And it also happens um, with the bird hunting song too. Now there are no activities for the bird hunting song, but you do get a score and you do get the audio tracks for that. And given all the activities are in the book, the bird hunting song is a wonderful one just to mm. build some other activities around for your own sake. But very importantly, Sonnery Run has French as well as English okay. in your digital interactive resources. I think, Narelle, you're there teaching us the French. So, oh, yes. So we can actually, I, your students can become bilingual. Have you had any students come to the school, come, come to your show, um, most, and sing in French? Um, not the bird hunting song, more no. so the, um, the sonnery round, because mm -hmm. the sonnery round can be done also in French and in the book here you'll see that you have um, a version in English and in French. Mm -hmm. um, the Birds on Around, of course, does come in French as well. Um, although I don't seem to have... It is in the, the, it's in the digital resource. Oh, it's it's the French. It previously used to be on the internet, on the web page, but right. now it's included in the resource. Mm -hmm. yes. But I think what's important, what's really wonderful as a resource for teachers is that for doing the Sonnery Around in French, you have the PDFs that can be displayed, uh, you have the activity with yourself mm. doing the French and everything that you sing is captioned yes. in French. So, yeah. and it's all highlighted. So it's a language lesson, and you do it with a echo technique. Yes. So um, perhaps there's a challenge um, out there for <laughs> teachers and their students to uh -huh. come along and sing some French. Yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we did do a French school, um, and they that was probably the only only place that had done the French at this stage. Mm. So. We're up for it, <laughs> putting it out there. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, are there any questions from our teachers? Um, please use your Twitter, uh, tweet in any questions. Is there anything that you'd like us to, to cover um, or any things you'd like us to explain? Now, if I can just go back to musicstaffroom.com, there are six, oh sorry, six, you know, there's five. There's five wonderful videos, introductory welcome videos. There's the four songs, all the activities. There's Sue Lane, our, um, my colleague educator, there going through the kit in great detail, explaining beautifully how activities work. Um, we have a demonstration of the dance. This digital seminar will appear as video six in the musicstaffroom.com. So you can revisit this digital seminar whenever you wish. So anywhere, anytime, check out the stuff that we've gone through this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And of course, the very last thing, uh, the last step is number seven, which is your accreditation. So if you have any questions about accreditation for your teacher training to do with this uh, Sounds Brock digital seminar, uh, just get it onto Anna or Jason, uh, our, start, our state team. Um, is there anything that uh, Narelle or well, Jenny you'd like to mention now? Um, if you would like me to, to um, run through the French and the sonnery round, Please. I would, um, I would certainly would do that. Um, Maybe, um, should I sing it or should I? Maybe we should do it together. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. So, do you want to just do the ground bass? Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> So that gives it a, a whole other layer so of. Isn't that beautiful um, sound? The, the French yeah, language. There's music in the language, which is there. Well, the opera itself was originally a four-hour uh, French mm. opera, which mm. we have condensed into about 50 minutes, mm. um, and we took um, mainly the uh, interludes, which we thought were the most mm. melodic. We did keep a recitative, which is in the opera, um, and we set um, lyrics to it, uh, had those written. But yeah, it was a big job. But the original opera itself is, is just lovely to, to mm -hmm. hear it in, in the French. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And learning French in class, and of course you can do it from the front with the digital resources and, and Narelle doing the, um, the uh, echo technique to mm -hmm. learn and then to sing the song, it's all there. Um, I've, I've seen this activity work beautifully as well where the 
resources being installed on individual machines mm -hmm. and then students work as a group and they watch it and they all have to come back and sing in French, having worked it out themselves. So um, the whole thing about the digital resources is whatever works for your children at their level mm -hmm. and it's all there for you, uh, this really rich um, learning opportunity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So yes, so we have a tweet and this is a tweet from Michelle. Is your story of Hercules, sounds Baroque, similar to Disney's? I said that oh, in italics. I'll tell you what, I have to admit, I have never seen the Hercules Disney. Okay. Uh, no. I'd, like to talk, I'd like to go home and look at it. No, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, I, I would say no, because it is the story of Hercules before he, uh, we say it at the beginning, it's the story of Hercules before he became famous, before he became brave. Hmm. Um, it's, it's earlier on, so it's not um, the story of the brave Hercules that we know um, in, in the Greek mythology, it's more, well it is the same Hercules, but it's based on mm. um, how he turned into the brave Hercules. Which is a good lesson to learn. Yeah. To gain courage and... That's yeah. right, to gain courage. courage yeah. Yeah. There is a moral in there. There's a moral to the story. But, but he had the courage all the time. <laughs> yeah, he just had to look within. He had to look within. This is a, a beautiful yeah. morality tale. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm just looking forward to tweets. We have no more tweets at this stage. So um, anyone out there in the Twitter sphere, if you're wanting to um, ask us a question, make make a comment. I'm very interested in which schools we have on board and the uh, the teachers who are participating in the digital seminar this afternoon. Um, one of the things uh, often overlooked aspects of the resource package is the reading of the story. So the very first audio track is a, a musically accompanied reading of the story. Yes. And I thought, yeah, what a wonderful resource to have mm. for, for class. Uh, something to play on a wet Friday afternoon. Yeah. Um, or something <laughs> to play in a, a quiet time in a busy day. Yeah. It's a really good introduction mm. to any of the activities. So um, mm. I would recommend that that's the first thing that you do, is listen to that. Mm. And that will give you a, a really good grasp on 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 the music, on and and on the story as well. It mm -hmm. has the round in there, mm -hmm. um, and then from there you can pick the bits that you might want to um, look into further, mm -hmm. and that might guide you, help guide you in, mm -hmm. in the resources that yeah. you have online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the different activities that can be done with that story, because there's a, a strong, even though it's it's oral, a strong literacy focus, if you like, um, and opportunities for students to write their own version of the story, they're all a part of the story to write it out in their own words. Um, perhaps to write a report, oh, yes. you know, a report. What was the story of Hercules? Maybe a, a, a small report. Um, also to take part of the story and draw a storyboard. You know, this, Storyboard's always good. Yeah. And a map. So you have Hercules and then you have all the, the other characters and how they mm -hmm. how they link to each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's always a good way. What, what's Dave's uh, thing about um, Sounds Baroque and the story of Hercules? It's the an opera. It's about the opera, he says, isn't it? This is Dave, the baritone. Yes. An opera is the story you have before you have a movie. Is that what's what's his definition there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if children, if, if, children are, <laughs> if the students are unsure about what this opera is, um, yes. it is about a story. It's a damn good yarn, and it has some singing and dancing. And uh, to make this well, more accessible to students, there is some talking. That's right. So I mean, the definition yeah. of opera is, a, you know, a story that is um, set to music and and sung, um, and traditionally it it is sung throughout. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't really work in this um, in this situation. So there is uh, there is talking, um, and there are operas out there that do have um, talking in it. Not much, but um, mm -hmm. th there are. So it's kind of, you know, it does verge on that, the musical, I suppose, mm. as well. Mm. Um, but it is, it, it is an opera um, slash music. Mm. Musical. What, yeah. what I'm impressed with is that you and David both have operatic singing styles. And so there is an entry point for students to understand yes. their operatic style. Um, yes, you have a lot of um, really accessible talking that leads into the singing and some of the lyrics are pretty cleverly adapted and I think in the, the grand celebration you've added the lyrics to what was just the dance mm -hmm. beforehand. Um, but there is the operatic style and um, 
I would like to see how students react, and I'd be interested to hear from teachers how students react if they're actually presented with, say, a Mozart aria, mm -hmm. something that's reasonably yeah. you know, well known, or a bit of Rossini, Look, um, to see how they respond. Dave is a, a fabulous baritone. He, mm -hmm. He's got a wonderful voice, and I'm often, I, you, I'll often be behind the screen when he's singing one of his main, um, his main songs, his main arias, or the recitative, for example, and you can hear a pin drop. The, the children out there are just completely mesmerised by his voice. And it's great for boys as well to hear that kind of singing. Um, he's Hercules, he's up there and he's, it's a very um, masculine way that he's singing and I think it's really inspiring and then he might go out and kick a football with them at the end of it. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. to hear it and to see that, mm. especially for the boys. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, I'm seeing a tweet up here on the board. Um, am I, my tweet, is there a tweet there for me to look oh, at? Yes. Um, are all the terms and the instruments recorded on the digital resources for us to introduce the students correctly? This is from Michelle again. Um, yes, it's a very comprehensive resource. Um, the instruments are all written about. They're in print form, available as PDFs. And of course, there is the interactive resource where you can see them played. And not only can you see them play, the key words that Narelle and Jenny and David and Ray are speaking are brought up as captions. So um, we're looking very much at how uh, students handle you know, verbal processing, making sure that there is um, some captioning associated with what people are saying. Um, so I hope it's all there. And then in the book, there's even more, I think, in terms of terms mm, yeah. uh, that are used, musical terms. So the answer is yes, very comprehensive. That said, because perfection is rare, they rarely come by, they're rare to come by, even in the best of places. Uh, if there's any shortfall, if there's anything you need to know extra, please tweet or email or call the, um, the number. Okay, we have another tweet, uh, which is coming up here on our tweet screen, our Twitter screen. Um, no, it's not a Twitter. Ah, it's, it's I can see what that's that number, number, which I was about to remember and didn't. 8394. Double six double eight eight three nine four double six double eight, and that will get you most um, education things at Music of Viva. Um, and of course, the e the email for education is education at musicofviva.com.au. Education at musicofviva.com.au. Okay, I think we've probably reached yeah. the, the end of our presentation. I think um, we said all that we need to say, done all that we need to do. Um, just a reminder, go to music, uh, sorry, musicstaffroom.com to see this seminar again. Um, I just adore all the material that Sounds Brockle provided for musicstaffroom.com, all of the wonderful things that Sue Lane and Anna Griffiths have done there to um, decode the teaching. Um, anything we can do to assist, please call us, email us, all of that sort of thing. And don't forget to go through um, step seven of the accreditation if that's uh, where you're headed with your um, digital seminar and your um, professional learning associated with Sounds Baroque and Music of Everyone Schools. So um, thank you very much for coming on Jenny. Thank, thank you, you very much. And Laura. we look forward to coming to your school this year. Okay and good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>